Hello, everybody. My name is Rick Utzer with Airgun Web and Airgun Web TV. And I'm Cecil Bays, the Airgun Scout. And today we have Brad from Hawk Optics here in the studio. Brad, it's really good to see you, man. Very nice to be here in the studio with you. Yeah. First, first trip out. Yeah. I like it. Uh, and it's just awesome having you here. Now, we got together at SHOT. Yep. We talked about your binoculars. We talked about some of your scopes. We've been able to use those throughout this season of Airgun Web and Airgun Web TV. And today you've got some more cool stuff to talk to us about. We've got some new things, yeah. Yeah. And you're here for Extreme Bench Rest, right? That is correct. Yep. Starts this weekend. And you've got about what percentage of the competitors are fielding hawk dogs? Uh, last year when I went through, I sort of walked down the line and was looking, and I'm guessing it was 70, 75% of the scopes were ours. So a big day for you. It's always a big day, yeah. Uh, excellent. Well, let's talk about the big guy right here. We'll start with that. Okay. Because I got one of the first ones out, didn't I? Lucky dog. I know. <laughs> he calls me up. He says, Rick. Guess what? <laughs> and then you were telling me everybody that, else is still mad at me, dude. Yeah, yeah. And that's all right. They can be mad at you. I got one. That's all we care about. Um, but you were telling me they've been threatening this scope for a long time. Actually, yeah. This uh, this particular scope is what we call our Sidewinder ED, and it is part of the Sidewinder the Sidewinder family. However, this this particular scope has got some features and benefits that uh, nothing else in in all of our lines have. So let's pull this guy out of here. First off, it is a uh, the magnification range is a 10 to 50, objective is 60. One of the things that sets this guy apart more than anything else is the front lens is actually ED. That stands for extra low dispersion glass. One of the things that um, is particularly useful there is as light goes through a through a lens, it's refracted, it's mm -hmm. broken apart. An ED lens is very dense, heavy glass at the point of manufacture. When light goes through it, it's not re refracted nearly as much. So actually what that does also is gives you edge to edge clarity. So when you're, when you're looking through the scope from side to side, it is basically pristine. So that's optically, that's the thing that sets this guy apart. There's also some other things. Number one, you know, the magnification is enormous. It is fitted with what we call our TMX reticle, which is the spacing is based on a 20x half mil dot, which everybody's familiar with from sure. our Sidewinder series. Um, Rheostat illumination control. It is, of course, a glass etched illuminated reticle. Let's let's take a break just for a minute because I want to talk about the TMX reticle. All right. Because Cecil and I, we do a bunch of hunting, and we've been using the AMX reticle, which gives you like a, a tree. The Christmas tree, yep. Yeah, and it gives you some horizontal aim points, the sort of reference points to to help you when the wind's blowing and you got yes. to adjust left to right. So what you have, it, instead of just that tree, you've actually got you know a, at least three mils out and eight mils down, you have specific intersect points. Correct. That at each intersection, you have an aim point. And you use this field target, right? You took yes. the BSA Yes, I took it up and shot field target with the Air Gunners of Arizona. And uh, it worked really well on that BSA Gold Star. Yeah, I mean, because... If, if you got a little bit of wind and you know that you're one mil over here, yep. you, you don't have to guess where that aim point is because each specific intersection, there's a specific aim point. And I got to tell you, man, that's sweet. I, and I, I use it for hunting a little bit, had it mounted to my air arms. And we're in crosswind and we got, you know, we're trying to hit prairie dogs. You want a nice clean shot. And, you know, I'm three here, two high. I put that aim point right on the, the dome and pull the trigger and bonk. And uh, having that very specific aim point is... I love it. So whether it's com competitive shooting or practical hunting application, mm -hmm. that TMX reticle makes a difference. It's a big jump up. Actually, once the guys get to shooting that reticle, they are really enjoying it. Yeah, so we're, we're seeing so. a lot of positive feedback. The, the scope actually comes with a four inch side wheel as standard. However, wow. there is a six inch side wheel available. Um, if you want the larger... <laughs> if you just want one? If you Well, if you want... Some of the field target guys want that larger diameter wheel so they can create their own tape around there gotcha. and they basically mark it to the yard so if they if they range a shot and it's 32 yards they know exactly i got you how right. many you've clicks got, to do you've got more distance and exactly more, more range the, to get that dialed in well, that your, would make sense for the field target hunter that like is correct it. yeah so they they like that a lot now also a coil erector spring which for internals is much better at helping you hold POI. Now here's one of the really clever things, and this is one of the reasons it took us five years to develop the scope. It comes equipped with quarter minute of angled turrets. However, some guys who are competitors prefer an eighth minute. Okay. Or guys who are purists and use mil-mil, mm -hmm. they, they want a one-tenth mil turret. So 
we actually have this as a patented interface. So if a guy wants 10th mil mm -hmm. turrets, he just orders a pair. They're about a hundred bucks a set. Same for the uh, for the That's eighth minute. Cool. So this is all allows you to remove that. It's user serviceable without losing the purge in the scope. So this guy basically retails for nine ninety nine ninety nine. It's up there, and it and it maps uh, street price. Basically, you're looking at nine hundred bucks. Now we talk air guns primarily here, but this yes. is also for. Oh, powder burners, long range you bet, shooters. You like bet. Yeah, I mean, that's a 1400 yard scope right yeah. there. And, and so, you know, Cecil likes elk hunting and deer hunting and all that definitely. stuff. And yeah, I mean, you can now, some states, you can do some of that with an air gun, but realistically, you're a 308 or 30 aught six. Right. And this is it's, optimally suited is for that super long range position very, shooting. Exactly. Very universal very for whatever your shooting disposition would be. And in particular for the air gunners, this does parallax down to 10 yards. So shooting 30 feet in your basement, you can be on 50 power <laughs> and it will focus it's pristinely. It's pretty incredible, yeah. Yeah, it is. I, it is. I use it at 20, 21 yards just to practice bench rest. Mm -hmm. And gosh, when you're zooming in and you're zooming in, you're zooming, the things getting bigger, bigger. Because we shoot two mil bulls for bench rest and yep. they're like... <laughs> That, enormous yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty cool so, of course uh, it throws you off because you're shooting groups right you think the group is this big <laughs> and then you walk up and it's like oh that's not bad not yeah. bad at all yeah. <laughs> smaller than a dime yeah but the 177 looks like this big <laughs> anyway but yeah all in all it's a pretty incredible piece of equipment for a thousand bucks yeah it really is so this is your top of the line this is the top of the line in the sidewinder family this is you know like i say it's unique because of the turrets the ed front lens of uh, the 50 magnification, the rheostat illumination control, which you don't find in any, yeah. any of the other sidewinders, but it needed to be somewhere and that's the family we put it in. So let's go ahead and box this up. We've All talked right. about this. Now, you didn't just bring this, you brought some other stuff too. Now, if I was a, you know, just got my gun, mm -hmm. got the factory scope, you know, it's okay, but I want to take, you know, I want a decent scope. Jump just, up a little bit. Yeah, jump up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's a thousand bucks. Yep. What do we have in the you know more reasonable price? Okay. What we're gonna do is is go right to the our steady eddy air gun scope. This is okay. an Air Max. Okay. okay. And I'm familiar with that one. You mm -hmm. yeah, these have been completely redesigned over the course of the last year and a half. Okay. So that's why in 2015 we barely shipped any of these because all of the internals on the Air Max one inch scope chassis have been completely re-engineered. Because one thing that happens is you've got really harsh spring guns out we do. there. And a lot of times you can put a nice new scope on it and in, in, in less than a tin of pellets, the, the reticle is rolled or the reticle is broke. So we, we bumped, beefed everything up on the inside of here in the erector tube assembly, the spring, and there's lots of secret stuff going on in there as well. We integrated the, uh, the adjustable objective so it's much lower profile. Mm -hmm. So when you mount it, you can get it nice and low to the nice and low to the... I also noticed, noticed that it doesn't move the whole head. It's it, just that this is correct. Wheel. That's, I like that's that why they bit. call that integrated. Um, the turrets have been improved and we actually fitted it with a glass etched reticle. So it's got the AMX reticle uh, that you're you used go. to yeah. in the uh, Air Max 30s. Well, let's talk about that just for a minute because what's the price point on this? Uh, sub $200. All right. So sub $200, we're looking at uh, uh, etched glass reticle. Correct. And not just some generic milled up, but the true AMX reticle. Right. Which you would normally have to jump to what the Air, Air Max, Max 30, 30 right, which right. is a four hundred dollar scope. Yes. So we're looking at that type of quality in the sense of the kind of reticle you're getting, etched mm -hmm. glass, resilient to recoil. You can put it on your Springer, sub two hundred dollars, very clear, very nice. with the yeah. AO, and it's. I, I've used the scope quite a bit, and I really like to have that AMX reticle yeah, on a it, budget scope. That is. Everybody, yeah, that's, that's really a step cool. up. There. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. They're liking it a lot. So, uh, so right there, that's your go-to yeah. for a spring gun. However, we do we do have another family that we we have re-engineered all the internals okay. the same as this, and that is uh, that is our panoramas. Now, this one is a sample that I've been carrying out here, and unfortunately, it doesn't have an AO on it. But okay. there are many scopes in the panorama family okay. that do have AOs. All right. They're all fitted with a glass etched reticle that is a standard 10X half mil dot. Okay. okay. So you're familiar with I that am. from some of our, from the panoramas previously. Uh, red and blue illumination. Um, again, all of the inners have been beefed up like the Air Maxes. Lovely low profile turrets. And there you have it. It's yeah, a, that's a lovely little scope. That's a two to seven. That is two to seven. Yep. Cecil, I don't know about you, but something like a, uh, 
like we've got that new Urban 22 from Gamo. Yes, that would be a perfect that fit for that. That would be just phenomenal. Lightweight, mm -hmm. low profile. Of course, we'd want the one with the AO on yeah, it. Of course, that yeah. Is, I know a guy that sells those. Yeah, I do yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is a, uh, I mean, I, I have the Panorama, the old Panoramas. Sure. And they are still one of my favorites. I really like the etched glass reticles. Having had so many of the water reticles just fail. Right, they break, they bend, they They're they, clunkier. They you fail. can do so much more with a laser than you can stamping a piece of wire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a much more open field of view because you don't literally have to go edge to edge like you do with a wire reticle. It has to be suspended. In yeah. There. So mm -hmm. this is, I, you know, I like the fact that these are all redone, more resilient to, mm -hmm. the, to the spring powers. Now you have something that, you know, we go up a few more steps. We, we can. sort of skip the endurance. We skip the Air Max 30. But we're not quite to the sidewinder yet, not the ED in other words, but you've got something else back here I too. I do, yes. This is our new flagship family and it's called Frontier. Uh, this one happens to be a 5x30. Wow. This is also available in a 2.5x15. Yeah, that's the one there I'm are, looking for. There are two reticle choices, the TMX reticle that you, okay. we have in the 10 to 50 and also what we call an LR dot or a long range dot, which sets up beautifully on a lot of big powder burners. Okay. Gives you five aim points. Um, but this one has the TMX reticle in it. Uh, Unfortunately, the the five by thirty will only parallax to thirty yards. However, we do sell a lot of these into the air gunning community because not everybody is worried about shooting ten yards. Sure, a lot of them are shooting much further out. Well, you're getting ready to go down the EBR, and they shoot seventy five, seventy five or one hundred and five yeah. meters. Right. Yes, yeah. they're they're so. way out there, um, and those guys are pretty much not counting all of their clicks. So these have really nice low profile turrets. Um, so you're going to be in a hunting situation. You don't have to worry about right. doinking them and, and knocking them off. So there's red illumination only, but it does have 11 intensity levels. Okay. So again, lovely, lovely piece of equipment. And these are selling quite well. In yeah, I, I really want the two and a half to 15. I think from a hunting scope, you got the TMX reticle. You got Correct. a great uh, magnification on the two and a half because we were hunting squirrels. Yes. And you need that wide field of view. Yeah, you know, chase just to them find through them. the trees. Yeah, yeah, and, mm -hmm. but then you can zoom in, and then you can really dial in on your prey. Definitely. So that has me very excited. The two and a half to fifteen uh, uh, model. The other thing that that I found shipping rifles, you know, and you might not even think of it, but these low profile turrets go in a rifle case. So much, much, better. much easier I'm than sure. these big long ones. You know, you have hard shell cases. You're going to travel with it, put it in your 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 case, and and ship it, or or take it on the plane with you, or whatever. Um, try and do that with some of those. Yeah. Big gnarly. Yeah. You just can't. Especially yeah, you, you got, got the, the big side, side wheel. wheel. Yeah. yeah. And by so, the way, this is side focus as well, but there is no aftermarket option for a yeah. larger wheel, which there's going to be guys go, okay, I, I need a larger wheel. Yeah. Or they'll go try and have one custom made. I would recommend against that because it can frankly affect the warranty. I got gotcha. you. So um, another thing, optically, there are 21 layers of coatings on each one of these wow. lenses, both sides. So it what is. What does that mean? Okay. So talk, a little tech talk because. Okay. We've got the sort of the guy here that right. knows the Take stuff better than we do. When you talk about, I know layer, you know layers of coating are critical. Mm -hmm. It deals with how much light you get through. What's a typical scope have? A 10, 4, 8, 12? And that I mean, depends on the manufacturer okay. and, and the level of where that scope falls in their good, better, best category. Okay. What coatings do is they either allow or disallow certain components of the light spectrum. Okay. So that is what, you know, usually the more the better because it gets everything to your eye appropriately. Less coatings allows more of the junk to come through. Okay, it's filtering or, it out. It, it basically is. I got you. So that you have, you have coated, which means one side of the lens is going to be coated. You have multi-coated, which means one side of the lens is going to have multiple coatings on it. You have fully multi-coated, which means both sides of each lens okay. has coatings on each side. Okay. So and what this is fully multi-coated. I got you. So that's why it sits at that seven hundred dollar price point. Yep. Yeah, uh, this would retail for eight hundred, and its street price is going to be right at seven. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. So we've got this sitting at that, you know, between your, well, gosh, you know, the the Air Maxes and the Endurance. I consider those high end. Those are like your middle of the road scopes. Upper middle. Yes. Yeah, Upper sure. middle. Yeah. And this is like middle high that's and the then high. Number one. At yeah. the top of our price list is the Frontier family. Okay. So I we consider you. this our flagship. Okay. And where does the the Sidewinder ED then sit? 
uh, that is right in the sidewinders, which is right okay. next, next okay. down. Okay. So. All right. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about a problem. You know, we, we, <laughs> not that you have a problem, you actually solve a problem, but air gunners have a problem they run into all the time. And it's the dreaded barrel droop. Cecil, how many times have you been, have you dealt with people on comments about barrel droop? Oh, constantly you're getting that barrel Daily. droop. And then <laughs> it's, it's, it's a common problem, but also just getting enough mills to adjust for long range shooting. Well, here's something that we'll talk just briefly about. I don't want to go too long, but we got you here. You're yeah, stuck. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. You're sandwiched. You're not going anywhere. So, not through you. <laughs> not at all. You go that way. Um, but, but like some scopes that have a really large magnification range, mm -hmm. you have a limited minute of angle adjustment. That is correct. Okay, so I have had guns like with a fixed four power. Mm -hmm. that I could adjust all I wanted, never mm -hmm. had a problem with barrel droop. I throw a 4 to 16 on it, and I can't get the shot up high enough. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm limited on my minute of angle adjustment. On the traverse inside. Yeah, inside just how much I can too. travel. Yep. So that's something you, you may not realize. You get the bundle scope that's a 3 to 9, and then you go by the 6 to 24, and, oh, my rifle's got barrel droop. I got it. The people are a lot banging. Of times they blame it on the scope. They, yeah, blame it on know? the scope. They're banging their hands and carry it on. But really, it is just they went to a scope that doesn't work well with that rifle it, unless or, you fix it. Right, or they didn't get the proper set of rings. There you go. Yep. Or you didn't get the right rings. So you guys actually have a solution. We've got a, yeah, we've come out with a really nice low-cost solution to, to help with the, uh, with the barrel droop that you're seeing going on. And this what is, I used to do was cut... Uh, soda pop, pop cans can. yeah. and uh, some electrical tape or a business card or whatever something we have what to we do. Use out in Texas. <laughs> Anything to elevate the rear of the scope. But what happens when you do that, you run the risk of, of damaging, damaging the tube. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you go like this and that's still square, it's going to pinch here. Yeah. And it's gonna you're gonna damage your scope. Yep. Yeah, and, instead and of having a straight into, line, you're gonna have it like this. Yep. yep. <laughs> and that can run into actually a warranty situation. Yep. If guys crank down too much on it, they crimp the tube. Uh, you're done. Yeah, what mm -hmm. what do we do about that? Yeah, I, yeah. We we didn't make it that way. I so. heard I heard one guy say, look, we'll fix our stupid, we won't fix yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this these so are yeah, these, tell me about these. Okay, these are just little shims that are designed to work inside of the Hawk match mounts. So when you take that off, there's a front and a back one. Yep. So these actually offer you 25 minutes of angle of adjustment that's already built in. So you're starting out at that point right. that much further ahead. So they fit our rings, nobody else's. Yes. And they're available in one inch and 30, 30 millimeter. Right. So, and street price is gonna be about 11 bucks. I mean, that's such a cheap fix, really. And it, for such a quote unquote big problem, I haven't mm -hmm. found it to be as huge a problem because I understand the mechanics of what's going on. You know, right. if you're a new guy and you get a gun and you just can't sight it in, it can mm -hmm. be very frustrating. It's not that big a deal. You know, we have adjustments on our scopes because actions aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. We have adjustable sights because things don't line up perfectly. Machining, as best as you want to get it, is never perfect. So you have to have a way to adjust it. Yeah. And sometimes, especially on maybe a, a lesser expensive gun, uh, you may have that variation where it just doesn't come up. Uh, you know, it locks up fine, mm -hmm. but it's just not as straight as the next gun yeah. next to it. Right. And this gives you something that's very inexpensive that works very. with these mounts. Well, and then I'm, I'm assuming that this will, if you use these, it keeps help keep your warranty valid on your scope. Yeah, it, it, it'll is, keep you from crunching the tube. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. and that's, you know, saving your lifetime warranty is worth 11 bucks of to course. me. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. And there's there's more expensive answers out there. There's adjustable bases yeah, and there's sure. adjustable rings and things mm -hmm. like that. But hey, for 11 or $12 right there, that, that puts you that much further ahead. Yeah, uh, these rings, I've been really happy with them. They seem to have, I'll, and I talked to a buddy of mine who does metallurgy and machining mm -hmm. along with aluminum. And I said, it's got a really hard aluminum. And he says, no, it's actually a little softer. And I said, what? He says, well, when you tighten it down and it sort of snaps and it just never moves. I mean, it mm -hmm. just like locks down and done. Uh, and I've, I've really had a lot of success with these, even on super magnum springers. And I've actually found that the two piece rings on a magnum springer work better than a one, one piece. piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there's less mass. Uh, yeah, it makes and, good and sense. You don't have, you don't, you're, you're not just holding the scope, you have to hold the mount. Mm -hmm. If you use less mass that holds firm, it's better than having a large, heavy mount 
that has to hold itself wants to in back. the scope. Yeah. Yep. And these really work well. So to have a match solution, so happy about that. Something that's nice about our rings that a lot of people don't understand is there is a cushioning tape on mm -hmm. the inside there, and it's it's actually got a micro encapsulated adhesive. So you've noticed when you've pulled yeah. scopes out of out of our rings that there's some residue on there, sure. which cleans off with a little WD-40, but that actually bites into the scope and holds it rock solid. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, our match mounts do sell very, very well. They're double screw, they're robust. Um, yeah. And they're not pricey. No, not at all. They're very, very affordable. So we've got everything from the $1,000 scope yep. to the Frontier, which, <laughs> <laughs> just set that back over there. It's on tape, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> I forgot about that. So we got the Frontier, then we've got the, we've got what well, you brought back there. You have the Air Max, Air Max and then you have Panorama. the Panorama. Yep. And that's still, that's just like a teeny little, oh, it's, yeah, it's a tiny smattering. little piece, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've used your, your binoculars, which are f phenomenal. You've got spotting scopes. You've got, you know, just all kinds of things. And mm -hmm. if you're into sporting, just getting out in the woods, Hawk's got something. Uh, that'll probably fit your need. And we, of course, have the full gamut of scopes that are very appropriate for the powder burner guys. Yeah. And, you know, I find that most air gun guys have got have, we half have a, a dozen powder too, burners yeah. in, in the closet. So, yeah, we, yeah we, can, we can basically support everyone one way or another. Well, man, I appreciate you coming hey, out. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, man. Cecil, yep. good to see you good again, good man. You. All right. Well, guys, this is Rick Utes with Airgun Web and Airgun Web TV. And I'm Cecil Bay's Airgun Scout. Thanks for watching.